Back in 2009, vampire movies were coming at you left and right. You had Twilight, Let the Right One In, uh, some other ones you probably, I don't even remember. One that often goes overlooked is Park Chan-wook, director of Old Boy and Handmaiden's 2009 film Thirst. Released at the height of the vampires are sexy craze, this movie takes a little bit of a different approach to vampires and love stories within the vampire genre. So last week we had Keegan, he made us watch Bunny the Killer Thing. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's a good video, I hope. I haven't edited it yet. That's probably not. I didn't see this one ahead of time. I just wanted you to see it. You fired from the hip on this I one. fired from the hip on this one, thinking like, it, it's definitely gonna be different. It's gonna be a different tone from what we got from Keegan. Keegan picked a weird, wacky horror movie. I want to pick something a little bit more straightforward, a little yeah. bit more like artful, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, compared mm -hmm. to it. Classic Sam Slade making up a word. Artful is a word. <laughs> artistic? No, not artistic. I wouldn't call it. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> artful. And I was like, I really want to watch more of Park Chan Wook's movies. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, use this as an opportunity to uh, force myself to watch another one because it's like, it's like movie homework when yeah. we have these videos, you know? Which is one thing I, I will say, I appreciate going back to Spooky the Week. I, I, I missed having movie. Like I've not, it's been a very long time that I've had to watch a movie that I wouldn't naturally watch. Exactly. Which is what Spooky of the Week slash Movie of the Week is really good for, is forcing me to watch something. Like, I, I probably never would have watched this movie. You would have never watched this. Yeah. It's not as extreme as some of his other, other movies, There's though. probably going to be incest. Yeah, there's going to be something in there. You're like, what the heck? That's so messed up. Why is oh, that there? Oh, that's messed up. Uh, oh, that's gross. Why is the sound so explicit? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's dude. another thing. He Watching just... this movie with headphones was a <laughs> he... gross experience. Something he is weirdly, like, <laughs> known for is that a lot of his sound design is super specific and like detailed yes there's a lot of moments where you're like you watch the movie the handmaid and there's a uh, uh female on female uh very romantic sex scene yes but the, the sound artist went crazy on it it, it is clearly like you're just sitting there watching that movie and it's like this dude is just in a sound studio just noshing on like some fruit or something there's not a lot of ways to make eating sound romantic, you know? Like, it sounds like you're noshing on the That watermelon. scene in The Handmaiden would be more romantic if it wasn't like every little <laughs> bit of detail. It's like, <laughs> just like her licking her lips once. It is like they got Kevin's mouth to do the sound effects. <laughs> no. That's literally in there, I think. Keegan, what were your thoughts going into Thirst? So I looked at the poster, I read the summary, and I said, Oh, I know what this movie's gonna be. I'm gonna go into this movie, it's probably gonna be really good, and I'm probably gonna be pretty bored. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and spoilers, I was uh, fairly right in my assessment. So I guessed what the overall plot of the movie was gonna be from reading the synopsis. It was very well done. Um, I have a lot of uh, positive things to say, and I have a couple of negative things to say. I had heard of this movie just by like it being recommended by various horror fans. I seen the poster around. And I guess it didn't pop up on my radar earlier because nobody was emphasizing it as a horror film as much. It gets more talked about by film fans that are like, this is better than horror, indeed. <laughs> so it's like, that doesn't reach us as much. It's kind of like a whole, it's like a, it's like a romance <laughs> plagued by horror. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a gothic romance. Yeah. I actually ended up watching uh, the extended version. You watched a longer version of that it was movie? two and a half hours. Oh, wow. Lord. I don't know if that was a good goal. Yeah, I, I uh, well, you'll see when I say my thoughts. I but. didn't think about it. Like Samson was just like, oh, I have a movie. It's a Park Chan Wook movie. It's, it's, it's going to ruin your life. It's, it's going to ruin be, my day. It's going to be gross. It's going to be It's going to be well made. I didn't know. I literally <laughs> didn't know that it was about vampires because I, 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 I didn't even look it up on IMDb or anything. It's called Thirst. Then it's it's a called horror Thirst. Movie. What the fuck are you thinking? I, dude, I don't know. There is a 2016 horror movie called Thirst. It's about aliens that drink people. Oh, Thirst we, is almost too on the note. Like, I, 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 I assume vampires were too basic for old boy guy, you know? Like, I, I, I guess the, the reason I didn't assume it is because, like, the actual plot of the movie feels not like something he would do in my mind. So I went into it not really having any expectations, um, and it took me way longer than it probably should have to realize that the movie was about vampires. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how long? Uh, I will tell you, you are alone. <laughs> no, when, when he, started, started, um, he, he started sucking the blood, and I was like, what the f is he doing? Why is he drinking blood? <laughs> oh it took you that long? God. I think like no, it makes sense in, now. It's burned by the you're sun. Like, you're it like makes sense now. Listen, I, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> so like, even as the movie went on, I was like, okay, so he's like a vampire. I didn't realize he was literally a vampire. I thought it was going to be 
because the whole I, I can agree with you there where I was kind of sitting there waiting like is he gonna is he just straight up a vampire yes. or are you gonna got, kind of do a little different thing with it the moment it sank in was when he got burned by by the sun I was like oh so yeah they're just doing like the vampire so yeah that was my thoughts going into it I was com I was like beyond stupidly unprepared for it <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty good um I liked a lot of things in it. There's a lot of like really good technique making that yes. movie. A lot of it's good. Very well crafted. Very well crafted. Um, it's very, it's like, it feels highbrow for a stupid vampire movie. Yes. You know, it feels like a guy looked at it and was like, how can you make this dramatic? And like, how would this be like, focuses a lot on, focus the, on the character, which I appreciate a lot. Um, it's a bit, it drags a bit and it's not as good as his other movies. Yeah. Which I think if I hadn't seen any of his other movies, it'd be like, I'd probably like it more, but I was kind of like expecting more from it. Yeah. Old Boy and Handmaiden are like so good. Yeah. And like Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance is really good. And I was expecting it to like have a moment where it's like one of those movies where you're just like, this is the craziest thing I've seen. Cause like, there's always a moment in one of those movies where you're like, okay, that's messed up. This is, yes. this is completely plagued my mind. This has gone off the rails. This I'm has gone be off the rails. about this for the next week. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't really have that, but it's still, I'd say pretty good all, all, things considered. All the actors gave really good performances, um, particularly the wife character. Mm -hmm. um, I really sympathized for her at the start and then gradually over time. The wife, that's how you describe her. She's the wife. Even in Bunny exactly. the Killer thing where there were characters that had English names, mm -hmm. I did not write down a single thing. I, I, I more mean that it's funny yeah. that, that like that is what you latch that's onto the, her character as. It's the, the non-spoiler character name. That's true. Yes. That's true. Uh, I could call her the female protagonist. I would call her the antagonist. But. Okay. <laughs> well, towards the end, she's the antagonist. I would but. say she's the antagonist the whole movie. Well, yeah, um, there, there is the point where, where like he's just like, oh, you've been lying to me and I, I just like, you just used me. Yes. Not. I definitely found her manipulations really interesting. It was really intriguing to watch her do it because I, I was understanding her mindset where it's like, okay, she's powerless. Like it focuses on how powerless she is at home, how um, like restricted she feels, where she feels she has no freedom, which is why she goes out and does the running at night. She's trying to escape her life. Mm -hmm. And then she sees a priest and it makes her feel powerful that she can tempt this person who is not supposed to have sexual you know, interactions to have sex with her. She gets this feeling of power and control over him um, that like, you know, she's using to as a, like an escape valve for her daily pressure. Very well done. Um, I will agree with you, that movie dragged way too long. Mm -hmm. um, it should not have been two hours in my opinion, but um, I'm also not an art film person. Yeah. I, there, no, there, I, I think it definitely could be trimmed down a bit. Cause it, like the real point you can see where the movie's going shows up a little too late for me. I'm not generally a fan of slow movies. There are a handful of them. Well, you, you guys got off easy. We, I could have picked a way slower movie. Yeah, no, yes. Sam Slade did no, not no, really yeah. lay into the punishment yeah, like he no, could have. No. Both of you held back because I, Bunny the Killer thing was still enjoyable. It yes, was not yes, such I, a I, Keegan movie that it was literally unenjoyable. I, uh, one of the other compliments I would do is there's a lot of like low key um, dry humor or situational oh, yeah, there is a line in there that comes at like one of the most dramatic moments in the movie that is so hilarious it's it's when like they're fighting and he's kind of realizing how much she's lied to him and manipulated him and then he's like you said i was cute you <laughs> and he throws her <laughs> that, that off the best line <laughs> of the movie. Every single up. scene with the ghost man oh, yeah, that was, is <laughs> the funniest thing. I, I I was like, what? This movie has turned into a comedy. I, I, well, that, that's something that Park Chan-wook does a lot. He has really weird out of place humor where you're yes. just like, what? Don't put oh, that there. Yeah. <laughs> Main character's like, oh, ignore him, he's a, he's an illusion. And it's like, but you're both seeing him. Like, you can both see him and you both yeah. feel him. And you're like, he's an illusion. He's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bunch of the stuff that at the very, very end, like, it's comedic. Oh, yeah, it's definitely yes. um, And then, or, or like, when they're having the chase in the rooftops, and she's like, first he dumps me, and then he literally dumps me. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> he dropped her off the building. Yeah, he definitely um, enjoyed the fact that they're, like, impervious to damage. Another really good visual gag was when uh, the, the dinner guests get murdered and that first guy is like, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not scared. And then she just punches his neck backwards and, and neck. just snaps his head back. It was a really awesome Oh yeah, gag. there's some really good practical effects in there. There's a lot of weird effects stuff that you don't realize be like are crazy effects when yeah. you're watching it. Like yeah. anytime they do something supernatural, you're kind of like, it's so seamless. Well, like when she like she floats and then he, he, he and he catches her and her legs wrap around him. And then I'm like, wait, where's the wires? Like, wait, wait, I'm like, wait, 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 like, 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 what, what, what? Like the one that well, I, I always think of is, is where he just 
picks up the the old lady from her like he yes, has the no, he that, picks up the whole chair and stuff like, and just walks wires? to another room and I'm just like where are the wires? It's just so where simple. It's such a simple like looking effect. So but, like you're just like how did they do that? I, I would say there's yeah. a it looks big so simple. caveat to all of that, which there is a sequence that I thought looked pretty not terrible but just pretty bad, and that's the rooftop jumping. Oh sequence. yeah, I, I, anytime it, it, it was like, like heavily CG. Yeah, because well, also the way the camera's moving turns into like it feels like not great CG because it's flying through the air with not a lot of weight behind it, and it's like okay, yeah, this is. This it's because yeah, they were using the camera to service that effect instead of yes. the other way around. Yes. Well, it's also it's just doing things that only a CG camera could do. I might have liked it the most. Oh, I'm sure. Out, out of everybody, it, I, 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 when I watched it, I was like, "This is definitely something <coughs> Kevin will like." The I, most. I I I totally loved it. I think I might have liked it more than The Handmaiden. Just oh, a bit. Oh, that that is a you, brave I tweet, dude. Smoking crack. You say it's a brave tweet. Nobody's ever seen that movie in. in world. Nobody's seen that movie, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a brave tweet here. Doesn't mean it's a general Ooh, brave You tweet. should see The Handmaid again, dude. <laughs> but I, I liked it a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, and, uh, and I watched the two and a half hour version and I'm not even joking, I do not know where it was extended. I thought everything was necessary and paid off. Interesting. So yeah, it's low, but like, I don't, like, I couldn't imagine something that I saw that was like, that can go. Not, I, I was not disappointed. The minute the flute yeah. thing happened, I, I, I busted up. I was like, oh, oh yeah, the flute, that, holy <laughs> I would say that actually hooked me in, was like, okay, so this is gonna get somewhere. So many scenes that I, I loved. Um, like the scene, like after they, 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 they kill the, the husband guy and he just lifts up the rock and just starts walking into the water. The first IMDb trivia was that this is the first mainstream Korean film to show full frontal nudity. I was waiting for Wiener, honestly. Yeah, I was waiting, it, it was, I was waiting such for a gratuitous movie in that regard where I was yeah. just like, we haven't seen his d Yeah. This yeah. isn't cool. This isn't fair. I think the style of the movie is very blunt and objective. It doesn't tell you what to feel about the story or the characters. Like the music is really good. It's super downplayed. It's oh yeah, really they don't use quiet. the music that much. But the, when the music does kick in, you're always like, oh no, the music's back. Like it's 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 really weird. Like it sne it sneaks in because typically movies like this. I would say that's my only mark against it is that there are a fuck ton of movies like this. Yeah, that's the literally like I would yeah, say that's the I'd only say that issue. Is I kind of the it. cornerstone of my issue with it. I did like the movie, but like I was like, kind of just expecting more of it. <laughs> like it's yeah. like by the end of it, I was kind of like. Yeah, I liked it. It wouldn't wait places I liked, and you know, overall it was good. But like, yeah, like I've seen this, a lot of this. This yeah, movie could yeah. have not been a Park Chan Wook movie. Yes. Like, it could have been made by like it, Let the Right One In. Real, like comes to mind because it's like yeah. you, if you told me that the same person made both of those movies, I'd be like, yeah, of course they did. That does just seem to happen. Yeah, no, no. yeah, a lot of movies like this. What I do like about why is I still like it regardless, is that because of that style, it makes it non-exploitative. Like it's not, wah, wah, oh, look at all that blood. They killed someone. It's they just dramatic. bang and drink like, blood. It's badass. Yeah, no, it's badass. Like, you know, like it's- They don't it's, even really have <laughs> sex after she becomes a vampire. It's, no. It's cool. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, but they don't like each other make anymore. It seem cool. <laughs> no. They make the violence. Because the way the movie is filmed, it like none of it, like it felt so different than all those other movies because of that. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. It, But at the same time, it felt egregiously gross. So it felt what it needed to feel without like being like, oh, look at that. Look at all that vomit. Did you see that? That's blood vomit. So you say that there are points where that's also completely <laughs> not true. I disagree. Uh, well, no, no. I, as far as like the objective, like what you were saying specifically about like, oh, it's just film like fly on the wall style. They're, they're like objectively where they don't do that. Like he uses a lot of zooms. There are a few points where I'm like, oh yeah, that was a, an intentional zoom because it's supposed to feel like this. And I would say this is a weird comparison, but you'd kind of get what I'm talking about. I I, I kind of likened the method of storytelling to Alan Moore a bit, like for his like that scene in Watchmen when 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 Doc Manhattan's like, oh, do you want me to turn down the brightness of my skin? And he's like, oh yeah, that's great. And then Laurie and Dan are walking to a dark alley. He's like, that's dark enough for my purposes. I'm a scene I really liked was after they kind of bang the first time. They go back to the dinner table and they're talking about mahjong, but they're clearly yeah. talking about banging because she's like, oh, I, I'm pretty good at it. And that's they're like, oh, do you want to play again like next Wednesday? And he's like, no, I have to be at the hospital next Wednesday. I would oh, love I would to love to be at the hospital. At the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just hard cuts. I want to work like, at like, the hospital. Like, I want to help people. <laughs> 불쌍한 사람들을 도우면서 살고 싶어요. Things it does aesthetic wise that make that set it apart 
is it does things like there's an entirely white room. They set up that white room and I was like, oh, this room is getting covered in f blood. I, I was expecting something to really be like, oh, this is why the white, the, the, we painted the room oh, white. Right. And they, they, they kind of did, you know, she coughed up blood, but as far as like a bloodbath, like what I was yeah. hoping for, they didn't do that. I get you. And I was like, oh, that's a waste of a perfectly white room. Damn it. But the last thing that I thought was cool that I kind of just realized afterwards, because the whole movie is about like, oh, this guy that doesn't want to sin. And then he ends up sinning a lot. I thought of the seven deadly sins. So like almost in order, like immediately, like once he starts feeling better, he's like, oh yeah, no, I'm awesome. You're right. Like, like I'm great. And I'm like, okay, he's got the pride thing. Gluttony, he starts, well, he starts getting hungry, starts wanting to like drink blood to the point where he'll suck blood out of a comatose patient. And he rationalizes it. He's like, I'm the good one. He would have let me do this if he was awake. He wanted to die. He wanted to, he die. Wanted to die. I only kill people that want to die. It's, it's cool. But the one he does not fully commit to at any point in the movie is Raph. I mean, literally throws a girl against. Well, because a wall. she's doing something wrong, dude. I'd call that wrath. Dude. I'm just saying he doesn't like that though. He does not like that. Like he 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 gives up all of his values. The one that he hates himself the most for is wrath. I also like the movie overall. Like basically echo all of Sam Slade's thoughts on it. I, I I don't have anything super new to add. My biggest problem with it comes down to the ending. I I, I was fine with the tonal shift because it it goes from being this like personal drama about one vampire and I liked his, like it being about his own personal struggle with it. And then it becomes about like, you know, the, the girl ends up being like the villain and she adds a whole layer. I liked all that, that was all great. I felt like specifically the ending was lacking in terms of what I wanted the resolution for the protagonist's character to be. The whole time it's setting them up as like different points of like this debate where it's like, I yes, I have to drink blood, but I don't want to. You, you, she turns into a monster, which I think sh that should have happened way sooner. For, for the ending that they had, I think that she gets turned into a vampire way too late in the movie. Um, yeah, I'd agree. It, it sets them up on opposite sides of the spectrum. And then at the end, she kills all the people and he like doesn't like it, but he still goes along with it. And I was like, that was a big missed opportunity. He should have been trying to save the people. Like, like if, if for the arc to be satisfying, mm -hmm. I, I felt like it needed him to be like, okay, no, this is wrong. I, you just need to stop doing this. I, I'm fine with dying. Th this whole thing needs to end, which is kind of where it goes, but I don't think that they completely satisfy m my desire for him to like have a full change. Well, he doesn't stop her because he still has this affection for her. He did literally everything for her and he knows he can't take that Yeah, that's back what I'm now. saying. His arc so, should so, have so, been so severing like, that part of him. So, but he saves the girl though. He, he, no, he doesn't kill her. <laughs> he still drinks her blood, dude. I wouldn't say that's saving her. Well, he didn't like like, he didn't like deep, deep drink of like, like, you know what I mean? Like he, he spared her life. So that way she I, would not I'm saying, I'm saying it's the, it's, uh, it's the difference between an active and a passive act. Like he didn't kill her. That's not saving somebody else from being killed. Well, he also realizes that these people know that they're murderers now. And he's like, it would be better if people didn't find out. We're at, like at this point, like they've killed but somebody. But then he, he ends up committing people. double suicide after that. Well, yeah, cause he's still thinking about it. that is the final straw is all those people that were their friends are all now dead before it was just strangers or or a cop guy or whatever, but now it's all friends and he's just like, I I'm gonna save that chick. No, it's okay, no, it's good. And then they just, uh, the, he, that's when he makes his decision. Yeah, I, I just think that that is less satisfying than if he had had more of a moment where it's like, no, this is wrong and he stops her. I just feel like she wouldn't have gone along with it. She would have known that something's up. He's like, no, don't kill them. Hey, we should go, we should get out of here. I don't necessarily <laughs> think so. Cause if it was like, these are like, what are we doing? Like at, at this point, what are we doing? These are our friends, why? Like, let's just get out of here, let's just leave. And then they're driving back, you know, maybe she's talking about where they're gonna go next. And then there's a long, slow zoom in on his face as she's talking about all the things that they're gonna do next. And then the slow realization of just like, this will not end, I need to end this. We could go to this city, they have a lot of homeless, so no one's gonna notice when they go missing. It's like a realization of like, she's never gonna stop killing. Yeah. She she doesn't want to drain, you know, just enough to survive. She wants to live her life with no restrictions. Yeah. I felt oh, like I got everything that you wanted, I felt like I got. My biggest complaint is it doesn't tread new ground. Yeah. Um, everything the movie does, I'm. it does a good job of it, but at the same time, I'm like, I know what this idea is, I've seen it before, I've read it before, it's not something that they're doing an interesting twist on. They're usually just playing it completely straight, which sometimes I appreciate where you take an idea that's been like, everyone's doing a twist or a you know a thing and you, you twist it by playing it straight. 
I, I don't necessarily need something to tread new, new ground. I'll use Train to Busan as an example. It does not tread new ground as far as zombie movies go, but it's just, it tells an interesting narrative within that and it's really well done. This movie, my problem with it is that it did things I like, but then there's also things where I feel like it just misstepped and just lost my interest. Because like generally I liked the characters, I thought they were interesting, but if the characters lose me, then the movie loses me. And I was like, I, I no longer, I think it was around the time when the main character becomes more sad that she's a monster rather than an antagonist or like a, like a protagonist force to her antagonist force. We got to this point in the movie and this is where the conflict should start driving real, like, you know, tension between them. And it does, but it also kind of doesn't. Like he's upset about it, but he still loves her. And that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, okay, it could have been, I could have liked it a lot more. Um, Cause you know, I, I don't think for, you can make a stupid vampire movie and, and like not do a whole lot of crazy stuff and still be interesting. But I was, I, for me, it was just like, it didn't do enough for me to like the other stuff a whole lot. I, I, I liked it overall. I, I feel like I'm being really negative, but um, I like just, it, I, that's why I didn't love it. I didn't like, you know, by the end of it, I wasn't like, ah, oh, yes, that was great. It was kind of like, oh, that was fine. Something that Park chan Wook is really good at and what it's not really lacking in this movie, but it's not as forward facing. He's really good at directing your emotions. Those beats that have these either high emotions or high tensions, he's able to like pull that out of you. Handmaid's a super emotional movie. These characters are going through very extreme emotions and, and you as the audience can usually feel that same way. This movie kind of, it does it a little bit, but it's it doesn't, I didn't get the same uh, reaction, I guess. Yeah. Like what Kevin was saying, where I felt more like, instead of involved, I kept- You're an observer? I'm, a, I'm an observer and I don't really want these people to kill people anymore kind of thing. Like yeah. I didn't feel in the midst well, of it. And I that, felt, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, especially by the climax of the movie, it's like, if both of these characters die, I don't care. I felt less attached to their struggle. Like I felt a big attachment to the main character. And then it kind of like, I guess when he turned his girlfriend, it kind well, of felt like a little In the beginning, you care about both of them. I, I think the setup is great. Like, they, you know, they, they have this abused wife, and I think even the twist with her not being abused is great. Um, but then I think we needed to stay grounded with the protagonist throughout the rest of it and have reasons, like know his motivation really clearly. I think it's really just that, just the ending with him killing them both, like even though it was an interesting scene, I feel like it could have gone. That that should well, have been the new ground. That, that's why. That's why I thought it would have been funny if she like pushed him over or something. Because I was like, he's stupid if he thinks that this is like that. That I almost wish that it had went that way. Because while the movie was going on, I was like, oh, the, the protagonist is a moron. Like he keeps doing stuff that a stupid person would do. Yeah. Like he keeps believing her when when she says stuff. I think. See, for me, I was like, oh, why why doesn't she just push him? And I think by the end of it, when she they both just burn to death. I was kind of like, and I wish they moved, the movie set this up a little bit more. I think what it was going for was that, yeah, she wants to live and she wants to be a monster, but she does not want to do it without it. They're, they're codependent. She's not just trying to save herself. She's she's pushing him in the trunk too. He, she, he didn't want to die alone. She did not want to live alone. Yeah. yeah. I, that, that scene where they where she reveals that they're murderers is great. Yeah. Where they're just like, oh yeah. What, what are you saying? Killed? Killed? It could be killed. And it then she's like looking at it. She's him. like, ha, 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 let's go back to playing the game. If they were smarter, they could have played that off. I would say the most evil thing <laughs> that the main character does the entire movie is when his poor Pope friend or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, was yeah, begging yeah. him to turn him into a he's vampire. He's just like, please so, turn me into a vampire. I want to see the world. And he's like, like no, okay. that's ridiculous. You don't want to do that. I'm just going to kill you. Alec, closing thoughts. It, it's a good movie. Would I would you recommend it? Like, I, I would, yes. I would happily recommend it if you, especially if you like movies like that. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to myself. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't. <laughs> This but I would recommend it to people like that like horror movies a lot. No, I would recommend it to myself. I, you know, I, I, it's not a movie that like everyone will love. Using the sitting with your girlfriend thing, I think it is a good girlfriend movie. Like if you're looking for a good horror movie, it's like it, it's a go, go, yeah, girlfriends can well, tolerate. Uh, I'm gonna take that back. It's not no, a good movie to watch with your girlfriend. Back. It's a good. Movie. This movie will not get you late. Yeah, that that's why it's the lateometer, dude. I'm, uh, uh, I, I think we had different parameters. I, I, the I'm girlfriend just, movie is, dude. I, I'm just saying. My movies see? do not get me laid when I show them to them. They, she she gets them when I like them. That's it. That's <laughs> never on the table. <laughs> it's never on the table, dude. Reanimator could get you laid. No, it cannot. Are you? F
<laughs> thirst could get you laid any day before reanimator well, could get you laid. Thirst, thirst could get you laid because she could just check out of it because it's you have to read it and then just be like, I'm bored. I want to do something different right now. This is true. Reanimator is like, why is that head trying to lick that naked woman's nipples? Yeah, I would I would highly recommend it, especially if you if you like uh, Park Chan Wook's other stuff. Like if and if you like just in general Korean, like Korean cinema like that. It was a well made movie. Um, That's it. It just cuts there. <laughs> <laughs> I I was bored through most of it. I'm sorry, he can I, you were always going to be bored. I, I was always gonna be bored through it. I would give a um, general recommend. It is a well done artistic movie. If you want something a little bit slower, um, something well, I was gonna say something that you're not embarrassed of your parents walking on, but there's a couple scenes you don't want your parents uh, yeah. walking in yeah. on. <laughs> it does feel like it doesn't tread new ground at all. It is a vampire movie that isn't embarrassing, whereas I that feel most true. vampire movies are embarrassing. This is actually a well-crafted movie that, But at like, the same time, dude, if someone came up to you and was like, oh, Thirst is my favorite movie of all time, you would still judge them. I would judge them less if they said, like, Interview with a Vampire, though. That is true. Like, if someone said that to me, I would probably hit them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just square in the jaw, dude. I think vampires in general are pretty stupid. Yeah. Like, I wanted to see Thirst no matter what, but that was my one thing going into it where I was like, it is vampires though, and usually vampires suck. Well, that's what the movie though. really needed was at the end when they both disintegrated to ash, cuts to the ground, a big heavy black boot walks in. I did the whole thing. And and it hands up and it's just Blade. The saw there music is. starts playing and they, they we insert Blade in there. He's manipulating both of them to have these, <laughs> these horrible relationship issues and these emotional- He's trying to manufacture uh, double suicide. <laughs> yes, and he manufactured the entire he double suicide. He teamed up with Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> that was, so I was thinking I was that like, is way better. Blade always gets them. Blade always, always, always gets them. Blade always gets them. Blade's immortal too. That's it. Yep. Tune in next week. This video was our first video ever to be brought to you by our patrons. So this is the new segment of our video where we thank all oh, of our, thank patrons. our patrons. So we got the thing. They're going up right They're now. Going up. Wow. There they go. <laughs> thank you so much for supporting. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. It's really cool that all of our devoted fans support We don't us. do this for money. I love your money if you can <laughs> give it to me, but we don't do it for that. We return all the money to all of our Patreons. No, no, we return all the money from our patrons to us. Yes. We donate 100% of the profits. The proceeds to us. To, yes. us. Yes. <laughs> to a nonprofit organization, which yes. is Uncle Mickey Productions. Yes, that's true. We're not it's a nonprofit. We don't so we it donate that's it true. to that's that's why it's also, a We haven't made a dime. That is true. So you can actually write that off on your taxes. Yeah, write it off on your taxes. <laughs> our analytics say that most of you are too young to do taxes, so that's unfortunate. Are they? Yeah, we have a lot of like 17 year olds. Badass. <laughs> hey, get get on it. Get on it early. Listen, Shit, man, as an adult, cool. I think taxes are badass. I haven't done taxes yet either, so. <laughs> I just evaded. So, I did the same thing with jury duty. They say, show up, and I say, no. I've literally done that. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna call the jury duty police? Oh, <laughs> uh, I think it's just That doesn't just exist. That doesn't exist.